Hello, how y'all doing? This is Knowledge is Wealth. Rich people own libraries, poor people own big TVs. Poverty starts in the mind before it reaches your hand. Knowledge is Wealth. I'm Issa Abu Issa. This is Coach Gaines. This is Nafis Abu Zaid. Um, welcome to today's show, which is the season finale. Um, this will wrap up. This will be the last of the series that we dealt with, dealing with the Masajids, the Houses of Allah, and uh, how financial literacy can pretty much help the Houses of Allah Jalawala in the situation during this pandemic. So we're going to end it today. This will end, uh, this is also the season finale as well as the end of the series of the Masjid Talk. Um, so we're going to deal with today is called Masjid Politics. We're going to talk um, a little bit about, you know, the politics of the Masjid. Not the politics as far as the side hustle and bustle. We, we, I think we pretty much cover a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the politics of yeah. the official way um, it's set up in certain places and certain massages. And then we're going to give some good conclusions based off of the overall show, uh, the yeah. series, dealing with um, uh, why, why we talked about this topic, why we felt the need to approach it in this manner, why we believe that financial literacy plays an, uh, an answer. Um, in, in a situation that can yeah. probably help us moving forward because no one, as far as we know, have, have experienced on the level that we're experiencing this type of pandemic. And when I say pandemic here, I'm not talking about the virus. I want to want to stop here real quick. When I'm saying the pandemic, I'm not talking about the virus. I'm not getting to whether or not you believe the virus is real or isn't. I believe that it's real. And I believe that Allah Jal Jal is in control of everything. But when I say pandemic, I'm talking about the financial crisis. I'm talking about what we're seeing that we haven't seen before, the 22 million and more unemployment. I'm talking about, you know, the stop of GDP. That's Retail, what I'm, when, when I say pandemic, like that, that's yeah. what I'm referring to. Stop of the, the total yeah. halt in productivity. Henceforth, of life. henceforth yeah. even the Eid being questioned whether or not you can have the Eid together. Even Masajids, even over there in Canada, they're having certain guidelines they already have in play where they're even not even letting you go to the mass shit on certain days. You know, so certain things well, they haven't had any, go. It's hard to find a total way. Things like All that. All like that. So we want to look at, you know, from that point and of you view. Just, and you just informed me that the state of Pennsylvania, um, just uh, the, the governor of Pennsylvania decided. Yeah, he's, he's going to roll the, with the uh, with experts. The lockdown. He's yeah, going to go with the, with the medical. General, yeah. with the surgeon general. He's going to yeah. go and see when they look at it to whether or not he want to open up or lift it up in Pennsylvania. Inshallah. All right, tell you. So mass shit officials and, and functions. So people know that there is order. With order and everything, you know, it, it, it what? It stops chaos. It stops what we call fold up. All right? Mm -hmm. Allah Jalla wa Allah has set the heavens and the earth in order. Mm -hmm. He set everything in order. So order is, plays a part. So having roles and responsibilities and, you know, filling positions all brings about what we call order. So the masjid is no different. All right? The masjid is no different. The houses of Allah must have order, so they must have people and responsibility. Well, I would like to say something, because you kind of like went into something I actually wanted to say, and it's like, it's, yeah. it's, it's upon Allah, it's actually yeah. said it in the beginning. Right. One thing that I'm learning, right, just through my own personal experiences, my own personal journey as a person, it's no way to have order or have management if a person isn't managing himself. Because if you look around at the masjids and companies, but we're talking about the masjid specifically, right? A lot of the people that's in charge of the master, that's in the boards of the master, and it's not no white Pacific, it's a general, just for me growing up where I'm at and I know the environment, I know the people. People aren't managing themselves. So if your soul, your heart, and your mind isn't managed and it's, it's not in a stable condition, it's no way to bring stability or management to the master. It's no way. Because who you are is going to vi vibrate into everything that you're into. No. So this is why we don't see order, we see chaos, because the people are chaotic. They have they themselves are chaotic. So it's no way to bring order to a chaotic situation with chaotic people. Well, the reality what you're touching on is two main things. One, Allah Jalla says in the Quran to all believers, Ya you had a dina amanu lima takuluna mala taf alun. Kabara makutan and Allah and Takulu Mala Taf Alun. Allah Jalla he says, O you who believe, addressing all the believers, why do you say that which you do not do? Most hated and detested in the sight of Allah is that you say that what you don't do. So another point is that you want to make sure that you're inward, right? How you are in private is just as well how you are in public. You don't want them to conflict. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when we look for people to take leadership responsibilities, we're not saying that we're looking for them to be ma'asum, mm -hmm. free from error or free from sin or free from failure. What we're saying is that they should be exemplary. They should be at the top of their game. 
they should try to put on the best game mm-hmm. that they can in order to, you know, put it. And that's what you mean. So if exactly. a person is not taking that step because it starts with yourself first, right? And then moving on. And the Prophet Wasallam did that. Allah tells you that what? In the what? La ala kalakul, uh, 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 mm-hmm. Allah says, indeed, we have made you upon a, a exalted standing character, showing you that the Prophet Wasallam, and Allah says, what? Have you been harsh hearted with them fundum and haulik? They would have dispersed from you. Yeah. So his character plays an, an integral role as far as his leadership. So and character I starts what inward. You're it starts inward. Exactly. So I understand exactly what you're saying. So um, here, when we talk about the day-to-day running of the affairs of the masjid, then we need responsibility, some rules and stuff like that in there. A typical masjid has an executive council, okay, an EC. Now, I don't want to get nobody con- um, confused because during the time of the campaigns, we're not talking about during that time right now. We're in the 21st century. So when we use these terms, we're not talking about these terms we used back then. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so with a chairman, an imam and a na'ib imam Now, a na'ib imam, imam sometimes translates as a deputy imam, meaning someone who can take the place as a representative or like an assistant imam. Mm-hmm. When we say yeah. someone is a na'ib, he's like the assistant or mm-hmm. the assistant. He, the, he, he assisted. If the imam is not there or can't be there, he takes over he the takes role over of the, the imam. Exactly. So the deputy imam, a mufassir, you know, some masters don't have a mufassir. Uh, yeah, that's very rare. That, yeah, yeah, very rare. General secretary, an assistant general secretary, financial uh, secretary, treasurer, public relations officer, asset ma- maintenance officer, welfare officer, and a muaddin. All right, now, you might say, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, can, can I, can, can I, can I, go ahead. A person, uh, it, the first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, where are all of these professional people at? Or how is the mess shit going to be able to, to, to employ or keep these people around so that they have incentive to do the work and things like that? And it goes back to what we spoke, spoke about in, in earlier in the series. If we were to consolidate our efforts, every position that was named here, I can think of somebody who will fill those slots in perfectly for the community. Right. However, there's, they're being spread thin and now you have one guy who's good at one of those jobs now taking on more than those jobs he's because he's wearing more hats than he has to because he's he's he has a a a a, a fragmented uh, uh masjid scenario where it could have been consolidated and 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 the people in the community in a certain mile radius could all you know put their efforts in so and we, we, would, we would address yeah, that yeah. in the conclusions we will address mm-hmm. that in the conclusions uh when we deal with the conclusions we're going to address that of uh, summing it up Summing everything up in terms of yeah, and it's hard to pay uh, people if you're not consolidated. You know what I'm saying? People that that's a professional skills, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's working. Well, anything. this is sort of resembling like what we call a board. All right, and Asa can actually verify to this. I remember when we started the nonprofit at the Masjid Ibn Taymiyyah, the Mahad Ibn Taymiyyah, when we was in charge of it, we had started a nonprofit, and we asked Ma- Ye- 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 uh, about the permissibility of using the mm-hmm. nonprofit. You remember yeah. what the Sheikh was telling you yeah, in terms yep. of that. So um, I remember that they're, they're, they're being bored. It was talks even back then with Muhammad Amin, uh, um, Hafidahullah, and um, a lot of the elders, even in Germantown at one time, had a nonprofit. They do have it. I mean, I don't know if they still utilize it now, but they still had it. So most of this stuff right here is normally what you see, like with businesses and things like that. The masjid isn't a business, so to speak, but it is ran and governed like how a business would be conducted. All right, it's in the business of Allah as a wajal. And we see this sometimes when Allah Jalla says, Ya you hadina amanu hala adulukum ala tija ratun tujikum mina na. Allah Jalla says, Oh, you who believe, shall I not direct you to a converse, a tijara, that will save you from the fire? And Allah used stuff in scenarios like that where He, he mentions about uh, business being used. Like we have sort of tagabun. Tagabun is that mutual gain and mutual loss. Yeah. Which is actually seen in business. So we know that the masjid also is the place, you know, where we can actually mm-hmm. wear in the in the fight for souls. So uh, we have the, the types of masjid officials. Every masjid won't, won't have these things because some masjids are smaller in size. Some masjids are enlarged. Some masjid doesn't have a larger community that might even need all of these services. Okay. Um, and we already established early on in the series that the masjid should be a center, not just a place or a musallah where you pray. It should be a center that services the community. Mm-hmm. That's one of the leading roles of a masjid, that it should be a center that what? Service the community. Um, the earlier salaf used to use the masjid as a place of what? 
as the office, the administrative, the administrative office. Mm -hmm. That's where they ran, yeah. the, they governed the country from. Mm -hmm. All right, so we can see that the roles that master can play. All right, so we can have what we call, we're gonna break down a little bit of each one of these. The chairman, this is the overall head of the master. He controlled the spiritual and the administrative going con concern in the mosque. Normally the chairman, okay, uh, if you look at it, as we said, sometimes the imam can function as a chairman, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes in our in our place, where we at in the West, it's normally either the organization mm -hmm. or it's yeah. the person who actually got the building. Yeah. The so imam, the person, man, he, yeah, he, he, so he. the person who got the building, who, who actually got the building or whatever, cut the deal, or the organization, all right, from the community normally would make the the big decision. And the imam takes orders. All right, and yeah. the imam would take orders. And the reason why the brother keep mentioning that the imam would take orders is because it's actually kind of conf conflicting, as we said before, that the imam should be at the head. And the way that the imam is is, is treated like an employer, uh, uh, like, yeah, yeah, an treated employee. like an employee, it's like kind of metal things up because when it's time to deal with things and, and handle things, the imam is kind of like restricted yeah. and can be hired and, 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 and fired. And a community cannot grow without a spiritual leader. And the Imam plays a significant role as a spiritual leader. So if I had a spiritual leader, I remember the brother um, Abu Maryam, Abu Alim, Abu Maryam, who used to have the store, if you remember, mm -hmm. the Mektab across the street from Germantown Masjid. I remember one time he made a good point. He was saying that we, the community is not used to having Imams for a very long period of time. Once they have an imam, and then two years, we got another imam coming in. And then three years, we got another imam coming in. Then a year, we got another yeah, imam. Yeah. And he says what that does is stops the actual growth of that or development of that actual community. Mm -hmm. Because what happened is you're always switching lead, mm -hmm. uh, leadership roles. So your spiritual leader is always changing. For whatever reason or another, that is not really good. All right? Um, the imam, he is the spiritual head of the masjid. His functions are many and diverse. All right, as we said, he can wear many hats. The deputy imam, this is, and I'm going to go ahead and let you read that uh, next one. The deputy imam, this is uh, next in rank to the substantive imam. He deputized for him when the imam is indisposed or officially engaged. When the imam dies, he's, uh, uh, he takes over the office of imam pending appointment of another person or his confirmation as a successor. The na'ib imam, meaning the deputy imam, leads the prayers and other ceremonial prayers in the absence of the imam. This is something sort of like what you see in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he would tell the people of the Quran to be at the front row, all right, mm -hmm. to line up the front row. Mm -hmm. What was the purpose of that? So that if the imam makes a mistake or if the imam, for example, passed when or couldn't lead the prayer, then someone from the first row who already knows what they need to know mm -hmm. will come up and lead the prayer. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what's amazing from that too is when uh, I remember Sheikh um, Mahmoud was saying how you're shown in the Sunnah how to correct your leadership, and it's not screaming and hollering in the street, acting like a fool. He said because in the Salat it's shown when the Imam makes a mistake, you say Subhanallah. You know what I'm saying? You don't follow him in the mistake, but you correct him gently mm -hmm. with Subhanallah. That he remembers that he does mm -hmm. the exact thing in the Salat. So it shows even in the prayer how to check leadership. Mm -hmm. How to check leadership, mm -hmm. and that's a beautiful point from the Sheikh. And it shows that. Mm -hmm. That, that we are a unit where we, we have enough layers that if something was to happen to the imam that someone should be able to slide in this place and that the ranks should not be should, you know it should not infringe the ranks at all you know you shouldn't be the, 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 the structure should remain silent even if the head is replaced and it also shows what mm -hmm. the Islam already have order mm -hmm. and that whenever we go against that order mm -hmm. is what we see that's mm -hmm. where the chaos is at Mm -hmm. You don't have to cut or out, color outside the lines in Islam. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, that order is already established. What you do, how you correct, how you do this, it's already there. We have the problems because it's nine times out of ten. It's not from the Quran and the Sunnah. As the early man said, whenever you find in the Quran and the Sunnah something that seems to be contradicting to you, which in reality isn't, then you look at it as a fault with maybe your understanding of what you're trying to read or what you're trying to apply. But it's never the Quran and the Sunnah that's mm -hmm. fault. Right. Well, you know what's it's amazing is too is that um, it, it, it basically it's a question. I throw a question out to y'all. Yeah. When we see what happened with the masjids and you know the, the pandemic, like we said, not the virus itself, we're talking about the financial problems in the country itself in general, but just specifically talking about the masjids. We saw what happened to the masjids, and we see what it still is. Mm -hmm. But that hadith you just bore, and we're just talking about, it shows, like you said, layers. It wasn't any, it, do, it doesn't seem, from that hadith, it seems that we should be 
as a community have safety nets in place. And those safety nets wasn't in place. It's like sometimes we read a hadith, we read the words, but there'd be things in the hadith that you're supposed to take from that. And one of the things, as soon as I heard this narration you just put out, to me, is safety nets. Where's the safety net? When he said to put the people in the crown in the front. And that's another they thing. They are that safety net. That's another thing we're going to discuss in the, the conclusion. They are safety net. Because right. when the Imam messed up, he can say the ayat. Mm -hmm. Where's the safety net in the communities? Mm -hmm. Good, good okay, point, good ahead. point, good point. Hey, uh, Muf, uh, Mufasir, he is the third in the spiritual hierarchy. He delivers lectures and gives the interpretations of the Quran in Ramadan and other times. Mm -hmm. His er, his er, his erudition, his eru, his erudit, his erudition, erudition, eru, erudition, and scholarship in the knowledge of Quran and Hadith enhances his his position. He is like the orator of the Masjid. There are occasions or situations where the Mufassir is also the uh, Nayibul Iman. The, de the Deputy Iman. I want you to understand something. Overseas is a little bit different. Normally when I understand the Mufassir, it's normally a scholar, all right? And overseas, the way that they do it, like when we was in uh, Sheikh Orslan camp, we saw that there was the what? There was Sheikh Orslan, he gave the general classes. Mm -hmm. He did what the Mufassir did. He gave the commentary. He, he gave the khutbas. And then there was an imam. Sheikh Rasulam was not the imam mm -hmm. who led the prayer. It was an imam who specifically led the prayers, the five prayers. And it wasn't um, Sheikh Rasulam. It wasn't. No. Right? Mm -hmm. So you normally, like, even when um, Adwar Alim was in uh, Egypt, and from, I mean, was in Yemen, and many of the people who come back from Yemen tell me it sort of ran similar like that, too. Mm -hmm. You might have a scholar of that masjid, and then you might have an imam of Sheikh the masjid. was the same and way. The, yeah, and the imam of the mm -hmm. masjid lead the prayers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, he might don't do the the general things of giving the general classes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think um, in some places we don't have uh, a scholar in our midst, but we do have scholarship. And when I say the difference between this, you say, "Well, that sounds contradicting," but it's not. We do have American scholarship. I'm one of those people that believe that there are people who have studied and have some academics, yeah. and some people have reached high level of academics here in the West, and they are able to go into the books because this is the point when Sheikh. Um, Hassan Abena was here. He made a beautiful point. He says, by y'all endorsing someone and sending them overseas to learn the necessary tools that they need to know to go inside to the books of fiqh, the kutub of fiqh, to deal with the issues that y'all have here facing y'all in the West, this is what you're endorsing this individual for. So when a person learns mm -hmm. and get a certain type of academic that can go inside the books to, to pour from the fatawa and to pour from those different things so that we can know how to deal in our day-to-day -day lives, that's what we have here. We have brothers who have reached that level. And those brothers that reach that level, they have what we call some American scholarship. And I remember Dr. Tarhead made this point before, that if you pit those brothers all together, it brings a body of knowledge. Exactly. Not saying that, you know, one of those brothers by themselves is Sheikh Fozan or, you know, or Sheikh yeah. Thameen or, but what's, you know. But, what's but a group of them can be that. But those brothers, they, 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 they come back from overseas and the ones from Egypt are competing with the ones from Yemen and the ones from Yemen are competing with the ones from the Medina. Everyone's ousting everybody out. But if we were consolidated, I cannot leave off this point. I know you want to bring it in the conclusion. <laughs> yeah. But if you have an elder imam, like an imam Noruddin or the imam, uh, imam Farid in Chester, where, okay, they might not be as eloquent or as knowledgeable, but they have the, the community activation skills. They have the business acumen. They have the relationships. Mm -hmm. They have the piety. There's things that you can rely on. They've been in that position. The bills are taken care of. Things are taken care of. Now when the students come back, they should be a part of the board. It's supportive. So that now, okay, instead of uh, proving to the community that he's not qualified to be the imam, you guys get around him and advise him in private. Well, one, one thing I did see from the uh, actions of our brother, Dr. Tahir Wyatt, is that he's a part of several boards of masjids. May Allah bless him. And since he came back, he's been working like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we first seen that he was working with Cherry Hill at one point, mm -hmm. right? Then we seen that he was uh, also on the board of... Uh, United Muslims. Mm -hmm. He's also working with other, and we have another brother. Masjid. We have another brother, Akil Ingram. Akil you Ingram, know actually, very personal. He does the same thing. He, he, masjid, he, he's he, working with like three different masjids. Right, right. He works. He I works call him professor. The I call him a professor. Yeah. yeah. Bless so normally, what it is with coaches actually suggestion is actually what should be. We have to know how to utilize our students better where they're both needed, where they needed the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on top of that, we have to uh, we have to remind them that the competition is really not about them starting a brand, starting a different um, thing and going to their own side, whereas there was no consolidation because we can't win like that, 
right? Now, it's nothing wrong with saying that it's not permissible for a person to have his own thing. Mm -hmm. But look how we can meet in the middle and yeah. still have our own uh, uh, yeah. exactly. individual uh, identity. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's basically what we're saying, that having someone who's knowledgeable, who can be connected to the masjid, plays just a vital role as having someone who is a fine, uh, over the finances of the masjid. All right, they play play a significant role, and I want I want y'all to see. Hopefully, throughout this series, we're trying to connect two things here: for a masjid to run, and for a masjid to be stable, it needs two things. It needs what we call that stability, matnawiya, and stability what, um, hisia, uh, physical and spiritual. Mm -hmm. Both of them should be in the line, mm -hmm. and this is what Easter was talking about earlier. If you can't manage yourself, how can you manage your masjid? If you can't internally, that's the spiritual essence. Now, the physical essence, we know. Some people can fulfill the physical essence, essence but sometimes if they are off. You're somewhere. Allah Jalalala mentioned the ayat in Surah Tanur. What did he say about the masjid? He said it's guarded by what type of people? He said people mm -hmm. who do not let the commerce, the business distract them from off in the salat, mm -hmm. establishing the, you know, the zakat, mm -hmm. these different things like that. So the spiritual must play a role and it must trump that of the physical, but which the physical will be in coincides with it, inshallah. Sure. Tell you, the general secretary, he is the scribe of the mosque or the masjid. He keeps the legal documents, the minutes of meetings, copies of resolutions and other vital documents of the masjid. The post is reserved for a literate person. The general secretary could be one of the signatories the, uh, the to signatories the to the bank account if the if the constitution empowers him and one thing you need to understand this shows us that we should have some level of education both islamically and secular and anyone in any responsibility or, or any leadership role should educate themselves thoroughly in order to understand this type of stuff because when we got smaller masjids normally when you have masjids that broke off as conflicts they don't understand how to run the masjid they just know that, look, we are pumping the dollar. This mm -hmm. is how the dollar is supposed to be. Yeah. We're going to call the shake over line. This is what you're going to do here. This is what you're going to do here. And then in reality, they don't have a forecast, a plan. Okay, mm -hmm. what, what are we going to do to make sure that the masjid has a safety net? What are we mm -hmm. going to do to make sure the masjid can stand on its own where it don't need the congregants to pay for its bills? What yeah. are we going to do by having something that we can have to support and that also can give out? But if you don't have uh, the inner workings of a board, you don't have the inner workings of people that's not necessarily a board, but are moving like this, a general secretary that understand the day-to-day, -day, keeping the ledger, keeping the accounts, keeping what's going on, what's going out, what, uh, what comes in and goes out, you don't have order. And if you can't have order, then it winds up with one person running it, and then that one person is getting accused, whether he did it or not, of taking from the funds, misappropriating the funds, not um, moving with a plan and head. Well, that's, and that's, it, a part of, that's what happens with the, uh, the... What happened to the money is one of the biggest arguments with the riffraff. Because people are still asking for the money. People, yeah, people, people want to know where their money's going. So if there's not a paper trail, a transparency, a balance sheet, you know, and that's how corporations are ran. But this is which is basically what it's saying. The general secretary is making sure that harmony is there. Mm -hmm. We're going to be transparent with the bond. Mm -hmm. We're going yeah. to be transparent with the ledger. Mm -hmm. We're going to be transparent, and we also want to keep meetings because we. So need you need to, to send somebody to business school, man. I mean, listen, listen. So no, no. business school is up there yeah, with. Uh, 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 I mean, this is somebody at business school. <laughs> listen, man, the rest just, of it, listen, huh? listen. I'm, I'm, just the thing, right? Because. And just what y'all was saying, man. It just some things that popped in my head. You know what I'm saying? The electrons that started popping up in there. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm seeing is that look, you. I remember when. Remember when it was like this, this non-written rule that it was haram to go to school. Remember back in. I don't know if y'all remember the We're 90s. We're talking about going to college. Going to college. Because of the all that stuff. Like that, that wasn't right? the '90s. That was 2000. Listen, what I'm yeah. saying it's is, it permissible to go to school because of the free mixing? Can't do this. You can't do that. So you just gotta be ignorant, basically, right? So what I'm saying is, is that I remember when no, that was a law. A law gonna provide. Yeah, I mean, I remember when yeah. that was all go. That was that was the thing, right? But a lot of these guys that were saying that they they, they went to school and got degrees. That's the funny part. The so these guys got degrees, master degrees, and all that, but it was around for us to go to school. And to say that to a group of people who already don't respect knowledge from their, up, their upbringing, or because a family structure shows you this type of structure, right. and we don't we didn't grow up with our family structure, so you got people who didn't grow up with family structure, and then you tell them it's haram to go to school. They dro dropped out at ninth grade, so they can't go to school. They can't go get a tree. It's haram. It's gonna be a woman in there. It's gonna be that in there. It's gonna be this in there. So now you got all these years later, you don't have these type of people but in the, abundance. But most That's of the a time, problem. The people that are saying that. A lot, some of the people that are saying that also themselves don't, don't have a high school education. So 
you got to look at the city. You got to look at the, the demographic. We're talking about the inner city. Yeah. And a lot of our duat or people that 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 were in the forefront and excelled in knowledge of Islam, they themselves didn't excel in secular knowledge. And then when the advice comes that, oh, you don't need secular knowledge, you know, the dean of the knowledge, the knowledge of Allah and his messenger is real knowledge. That other knowledge isn't really knowledge. You, you enable a person who didn't have the acumen for learning and you make them feel like they can still receive the same types of uh, uh, status and, and reputation and, 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 and with, without the degree or without the reputation or without going through those tests or being tested. Well, see, and, well, and that, 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 that was a crime against our and community. And I'm saying, what I'm saying, yeah, but, to say somebody had to, because the people that got the Islamic knowledge, they become superstars in the community. So they might not need to go get a high school diploma. No, 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 no. The one, the one thing that you must understand, right? That's a problem, man. Secular knowledge, Islamic knowledge. I know we're using this because I'm only using it because that's what people understand. But in reality, we, we've explained early on in the series, no yeah, there's the same no thing. separation. Islam covers all of those things. It covers finances. It covers those type of things. The problem is the people that we have in front of us, and may Allah reward them, that they are not well versed in those areas. Mm -hmm. And they only have a tip of the iceberg information and, the, and information. Some of them probably finish a science. Some of them probably graze into the science. They will be, if we take them back overseas and put them in an uh, uh, Islamic setting where it's academic achievements, they might be at the beginning stage of that science. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt. And the reality is that's because... That's the majority of us. Exactly. And because that's the case, what we do is we, because we're in the land of the blind, we think because they have Arabic and because they met a sheikh or two or even went overseas for, mm -hmm. for how, how, many, how many years, that they have the package still. When reality, they might don't. Yep. And that goes back to include your statement now. You have men that's already on the ground that have seasoned themselves with education here in the West. They have. And they have certain things they already have. So why is it that the person who comes back from overseas now bumps the guy out who's been here, who's been the activist, who's been in the community, who's been, who got the actual things that need to function. It has Western why you got to knock them out the way instead of you saying, you know what, it's a way for me to work with you and you to work with we me bridge and, we can, and we can actually bridge that gap. You, get, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So the problem is... And, and, that's, and, and, and just speaking to the, the... I know a sister jumped in from Chester yeah. tried, to, tried to jump on Iman Farid. But the point that I'm making is that the old school Iman yeah. is a community activist and has more of the, of the community package. And the new Iman is more traditional in his knowledge because he has the Islamic, you know, uh, 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 the Islamic but education. We got, but we got to grade that knowledge. How far did he really get in Islam? Because if he got gotten far enough, we wouldn't be saying he doesn't have the secular portion exactly. of it. Great point. So this is something for us to just pay attention to. And, and I want well, to make sure we highlight the mindset, that in the show. We understand the mindsets are different too. Look at the old imams. They came from my mother's and your mother's generation, your mother's generation, my, our, our parents' generation, where they had a grandmother, where they had a mom and a dad, where they had brothers and sisters. They had the family dinners every day and every Sunday. So they grew up in a community activation mode. So the old imams have the same mindset. But, but you can't sit there and talk about them and make fun the of them. They have the same mindset. So these but are the these reality new guys is don't. This. Call them names. Reality is this. One of the things we talked about, the conflict and the strike. One of the things that Shaitan loves is this unity. And one thing you have to realize, people trying to build a community off of a slogan in terms of we're just going to eradicate bid'ah. Anything that looks like bid'ah, smells like bid'ah, that mm -hmm. doesn't this, this is how we're going to build a community. That won't work. No, well, it hasn't. That won't work. It hasn't. And I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. That's not going to work. It you're not going to build worked. communities off of saying, you're in the land of the Kufar, first and foremost. But you're going to say now, we, you know, we're not going to deal with nobody upon innovation. And I'm not saying you have to deal with someone upon innovation. But just to make that the call. And like, you know, and all of this other stuff we're talking about, making sure the day-to-day -day ledger is done, the accounting, the finances, securing more property, understanding when to invest, not to invest, consolidating, all of that stuff get pushed to the side because you're looking at Imam Farid, so-and-so, quote-unquote, yeah, he got some errors personally. He's not upon the dollar, so you can't even bring his name up. And then a person will be sitting here arguing back and forth about the support or the defense or this of Imam Farid when that's not even the question. 
The question is about not Amen for me personally. It's not even about anyone personally. It's just bringing up the point that we have people who are in solidified positions and been there for over a and decade been there and have started certain things. Honestly, a lot of masjids have been started by people whom you would quote Ahl Ahlul Bidah. As a matter of fact, like Masjid Mukbil mm -hmm. was started by some brothers that you might not even know that they had a variety of different properties mm -hmm. before Dua Hafid even came down there. Before any of the other brothers even came down there, mm -hmm. all right? It actually was started with the brothers who allowed them to get that building. But you might say that these brothers are, they're not might be behind the dollar, they might not this. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The matter is, the simple fact is, we can't win if we're going to keep acting like that. The bickering and the conflict Well, look at, stop. I mean, I'm just saying, look at the UMM, the United Muslim Master, and look what they've done in that community, that neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, Kenny Gamble, yeah. That's what I'm saying, look what they did in that neighborhood. Now, you may want to call them, oh, he's this, he's a musician, he's a ahlu bit out of this, they that. But let's look at what they did in the community that they're in. They changed lives, thousands of lives in that community. Some people accepted Islam through them, and, and then they, and the people that didn't, they still changed their lives economically, educationally, socially. They changed the neighborhood. No. So the assistant general secretary, he deputized for the general secretary and does all the assignments stipulated in the Constitution. He makes an arrangement for the meetings, sends out... Uh, circulars and notices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. Then you have what we call the financial secretary. Okay, who's going to be in charge of that bread? All right, that's one of the biggest things. No, seriously, yeah, that's one of the is. biggest things, man. With people not having a strong amount of uh, taqwa, uh, especially in the days that we live in, and the closer, we, the further we are away from the prosthetic era, is the you know the, the worse it is. Hand in the you cookie jar, man. Exactly. So the financial secretary, he keeps all of the books of the accounts of the master. He prepares the cash book, the ledger, the receipt, and the payment account, in income and expenditure account, and balance sheet at the end of the year. He may be a signatory to the bank account if the Constitution made uh, provisions for such. The post is usually reserved for somebody who is accountant inclined. In other words, this individual either have a knack for being an accountant and wants to learn, so we should further him and put him in accounting school mm -hmm. so he can learn the necessary preliminaries and everything he needs about that particular science so that he can come back and con contribute. Having a brother who don't know nothing about accountants over the finances, this is actually not encouraged. This is actually not encouraged. And this is like a abuse of power and it's misappropriating because you misappropriate the funds when you have someone who don't know what they're doing with the funds in the first place. Yeah. As soon as you appoint them, that's when you, you misappropriated the funds. You misappropriated the funds. Yeah. You got to pick someone above <laughs> yeah. the it's funds who know exactly what they're doing. It shouldn't be no reason why a bigger masjid is not looking to conquer more ground. All right? After establishing something to support the masjid without the reliance of the congregants, and that's another thing that masjids must realize, you cannot make it seem like you're only worrying about the bucket on Friday. That shouldn't be your reliance. That should be something that comes in extra. Mm -hmm. But the overhead of the building, number one, phase one, step one, own the building. That's number one. If you do not own the building, you rent. It's permissible. We know the Fatwa Sheikh Fozan. If you do not own the building, then step two, you work out a plan that gets you to own the building. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, once you own the building... You got your step. Now you're working towards owning your building. You're going to solidify the building. Terms, either VI, the bills, the electric, whatever it is, need, the gas, whatever. You're Touch going to do that. So you, exactly. So you're going to make sure what? You're going to make sure you have an income for that. How do you get an income? You're going to look at even a walk, mm -hmm. an endowment, or you're going to look at investing in some type of business that brings back a profit that mm -hmm. can actually Real go estate, towards stuff like that. actually helping out the building. Mm -hmm. And they may even be a, they may, and there's another way you can look at it too. A good imam that knows the community around them, they should be able to look into the crowd and see business opportunities that the masjid could invest in. Well, what we did, we skipped past a section in this article that we're reading from about attracting the elites to your masjid. And I know that Issa liked it that. We actually skipped past it, but um, it was mentioned a, a real important thing. Masjids should keep up on the upkeep. We have the hadith of Aisha uh, and had the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in the Sunnah Abu Dawood about cleaning the masjid, perfuming the masjid, making sure it's good and it smells good. These are some of the things that allow people who are of higher status in, this, in, in the social realm Right in the social world, mm -hmm. who have a highest social status to come in and want to actually 
uh, be a part of that masjid. In terms of you have doctors coming there, you have different people, lawyers, you have different other individuals who have businesses. Don't mind coming to the masjid because the masjid is good. I give you a big example. Every year we find the people, quote unquote, Salafi, hardcore Salafi, right? They are at what masjids? The so-called non-Salafi uh, masjids. Why are they at those masjids? One of, what's one of the biggest things that they were about when they at those masjids? They mentioned, oh, the wudu station is so lovely. Oh, it's, it's, it's so big And the iftar is Oh, the, the, the iftar is nice. Oh, this the is that. The food bring everybody out. <laughs> so these things with the masjid making it appealing <laughs> and making it attractive <laughs> oh, will attract man. those certain types of people who own a chain of businesses, who can come in and contribute to uh, the financial... And this doesn't make the people interest. insincere because they want comfort or because okay. they're used to certain accommodations. Exactly. It, it doesn't make and you I, insincere. And I heard, I heard one, of the, one of these so-called guys over there in Britain say, well, we don't need you if you go to these masters. And like, we know some of you go there for the iftar. Know somebody, we don't need you. And that's like clearing out the, 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 the ribble rab, the rabble and all this other stuff. Look at these types of statements. I mean, look, if um, I give you a problem like what's up to you, for example, Master was still only 58 and a half years. That brother, I feel the old head, may Allah preserve him, right? He came in there and he runs their business and their management of the master, the, the finance and everything. Yeah, but he have a business background. Yeah, he has business background. That master owned property in the neighborhood. They ain't complaining about the club that was behind the master. They bought the building. See? But you only you know can saying? do that when you pick the proper people in place. That's my point. And now, if you got someone who's in charge just because he quote unquote no Sheikh Mukbil or not, or just because he quote unquote spent this amount of time in Egypt or Yemen or overseas, and just because he sound good when he say a fiery clipboard, he can speak some Arabic, then you didn't lost because at the end of the day, if he can't scout out the potential that is needed for the masjid to grow and that the community to grow, then he's doing a hindrance to the service as a disservice to the actual masjid. And and as far as helping the masjid, it's important that we understand this, especially when we live as minorities. It's important that we understand that. Okay, so um, moving on, this this is and this also plays a major role into what dealing with financial literacy. See how we say that financial literacy will help out right now. Masjids need to be supported, and one of the biggest support for masjids right now is what people. They need bodies, but the virus is preventing people from congregating so without those bodies they have to now resort to a new thing which they teaches online now more classes are online so they're using this this is becoming the new wave all right so teaching online um trying to raise up funds teaching classes giving taught away and things like that and still trying to help to raise up money for those matches so that they don't they don't sink if you don't know what's going on and what's happening right now whereas our brother coach can tell you we're not going on a v right now Right, we, we're going on a U, and 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 and, and it's a U. <laughs> it, it might be an L, you know, because you know we we still need productivity. We still need you know we still need uh, businesses open. We still need viability in the marketplace. And it takes time for things to catch for back the up. market to rise back and up. And that's and that's what you see right now in the government, which the argument is being. You have one side saying they don't care. Uh, about people dying from the virus or controlling the virus because live and let talking about live and let live yeah live and let live <laughs> people gonna die anyway you hear people making statements similar like this because they're worrying about look we need to hurry up and open up the economy because they're hoping that if they can open up the economy it can be a V but it's too long for that and it's too late for it's that. already a year. All right it's already it's looking a like U, it's gonna be a right L. in other words what we mean by you as coach said is that once that decline happened if you look at a financial chart if you look at a financial chart you're going to see that it's what it's going to be coming it's going to be that down period mm -hmm. which is known as a recession mm -hmm. and the longer the recession is if it lasts two period or more it becomes we already talked about the depression. depression yeah so then it takes a while to come back up so the financial experts they are telling us that if you're looking from 2020 right now you can just hang that up um to 2025 we're hoping within this five year period that we can probably get ready to turn the economy back, back around, around to come back to if correction. everything sets yeah. in place right if everything sets in place right so but, but it, it, there's going to be so many adjustments made because so many people were harmed from what happened exactly that things that you you were used to are, are, are going to be slightly exactly. different and that's going to play an effect on how money and we're spun. still in it though. we're talking the like masjid, about, we're still in the it. masjid still in it. the masjid is under this yes. yeah it is. that the masjids are under this so those mm -hmm. masjids that are not really have any safety nets in play mm -hmm. they're going to fall by the wayside there's already small businesses who will not recover 
That's already known. Well, right here on and Gerard they, Avenue, businesses just closed down. They, just, yeah, they can't some, open back some up. They can't even open back some up. Some businesses are wiped out. Exactly. Some businesses are going to try to come back, but man, and, and man, then they're going to get wiped out. And then they're going to get wiped and out. And then there's going to be a whole new business model with the businesses that you do see open. Which and, the same thing is going to happen with the massage. And this is why we kept saying, why did we approach the master topic by going back to the earlier days than now? Why? Because we wanted you to see that earlier, the earlier Muslims from the Salaf, they had solidified the masjid that it had legs. And when bickering come in, it actually destroys things. Mm -hmm. When we look at our masjids, we didn't look at it as a place of uh, strategic positioning. Right. We didn't look at it right. as we can solidify positioning. or we can go this way or we can go that way. We didn't look at it like Pro that. Personal it's, 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 so, a, it's a conduit. Yeah, yeah so, so what happened, activity so what happened activity. people that we kept with us, they got paid and then we kept... You know how the fast money mentality is. It's always going to be there. So you know what? I ain't got to save nothing for a rainy day. So the rainy days are not even saved up. The plans for that is not even there because, you know what? I'm always banking on Juma ah. We have about 2,000 people coming for Juma ah. The buck is going to be nice. Or we're going to have this or that. And then they banked on that. But not making sure they have stores. Not making sure they have buildings that they invest in real books, estate. Books, books, not books making sure they published. have books being publishers. Not making sure that they have multiple streams of income after solidifying the building and owning it so that when a wave like this, because you can't predict a wave like this, number one. First of all, you can't predict it. So when something like this does happen, you already had safety nets in play. Mm -hmm. But books are being published, but we're talking about where it's a part of the masjid's endowment. It's a exactly. part of the, the, the Beit well, Mal well, invest a, in, a, these, in a, these particular If you use a masjid, like he said, if you don't use it for um, 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 taking it from A to B, and using it as as, as, as strategically, and you just if, it's, if, it's, if the mansion is used as for a personal big up or like a concert type situation, then that's it. I mean, at the end of the day, if the con the masters have basically turned into you know how when it was a concert in town, powerhouse or whatever, yeah, Biggie was coming in, yeah. Pop was coming in, NW was they, coming that's in. That's what the, that's what the masters that's is. What they did with the, the masters is the just like, this master it's, right it's, here. It's the old this rallies. master right here is the part of this franchise and it's for here and it's for this guy to get his name tagged to, attached to it and that's yeah. it it's not no strategic and movements and you and, and you fall by the wayside because when this happened trust me brother majority of the masters you know one of the biggest arguments they was complaining in the board in the meeting with the government from new york i'm talking about new york massages the houses of the master they said that the the people that were talking to the government the questions that they were asking was all about mostly majority about finances and it wasn't about the health and yeah, safety that was disgusting. of the people or the congregants that's coming that because that's not what that wasn't a big concern at that time you have to understand why their concern was to finance mm. their concern was to finance because how do we survive and what we're getting ready to see right now, this epidemic, the pandemic I'm talking about, the financial pandemic, because that's what we have. What we're getting ready to see right now and we're at, because we believe, as some experts say, we probably at the top peak of the recession. We didn't hit. We probably got a year or so for the inflations to really kick our behinds. Mm -hmm. Right? Start so up. In, in, in terms of that, you have to really look at that. This is the stuff we need to be worrying about. Right? Not saying that we don't have our faith in the law. The Muslims have their faith in the law. Allah is going to Still provide. Still tie your camera, Please man. don't don't say that because Allah Jalalah said, "Wa itu lahu mastatatum wa kuwa." And we talked about this before. Allah says in Surah An Fal, He would never told them to make preparations, make ready steeds of war. Why would He tell them to make preparations? Well, people are going to use that idea when you go travel. Don't take no water and food with you. <laughs> Oh, well, don't take no substance. Don't oh. take no substance. Just go ahead, travel through the desert. Yeah. Don't take no water. Don't take nothing. No, no. Were, preparation no. Is, is just from intellect. Exactly. Right? So now we have to really look at that. So that's what we wanted to bring there. Finance, literacy plays a part. So we're going to sum this up real quick. Uh, let's get on to the conclusions. So I think we touched on some of the conclusions. You have a treasurer. He keeps the cash. You have the public uh, relation officer. The assistant Public relations officers. officers is what we're talking about too. Like being able to uh, put together community activation initiatives. Yeah. You know, um, understanding Deal with the uh, government. dealing with the government, dealing with the non-Muslims, the Jews, and Christian other 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 communities, and how we're servicing a a, a bigger common common goal. Um, as you know, a, a, as society members, you know, um, you know, there has to be somebody that is doing that outreach. And and and, and also that shows you, like, even when. Like, uh, even when you look at uh, overseas, I remember the brother was telling me how the, the uh, Sheikh Muhammad Imam at his camp, at the masjid that he's at, he sends students out to go to other masjids to give classes, to teach. Mm -hmm. He delegate them. 
So one of the things the masters should do is that we should deploy not look for mashes that we can say, okay, we're going to put the, uh, the, the, um, the umbrella of Salafia, the stamp of Salafia random. So now we only got four. So we had four, and now we got five. So we got five Salafi mashes. Not in that, just that regard. It's just to support a group or an ideology or concept. We're not saying that. I'm saying in terms of gaining ground that you have people in services of other people. Yes. You should always go out looking to see how you can better the community. Delegate individuals to go out and carry out certain things. If our masjids aren't even remotely resembling the earlier salaf, is it okay to say that we're following them or to ascribe ourselves to them? If our masjids aren't even remotely resembling the salaf, is it okay to say that we're running it correctly? Because these are some of the things that could have helped us during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It's not mentioned during the plagues or the pandemics that happened during the time of the campaigns that they lost their masjids. Do you hear anything on that? I didn't hear nothing during the plagues that the masjids were lost. During the plagues, and plagues happened during some great sahabas. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it's different structure. You, I mean, no, we're I'm, in America. The point, but the point I'm trying to make is, yes, it's different we have structure. To put a system. Some, some yes, are going to say there was a Muslim government. We have to put a system in yeah, We have to put a system. That's Safety the main point to be there. I'm trying to make. Mm -hmm. If we don't there. have a system in play, this is why we're going to fall at the wayside. Mm -hmm. We don't got Islamic leaders here. When I mean by that, I'm talking like a ruler of an Islamic country. Yeah, like a president. Of right? We don't have that where there are the responsibility of the masjid is on the government. Yeah. We don't have that here. Mm -hmm. So we have to create something that serves something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you are in the business of the houses of Allah, then you should be thinking like that. Well, it's going to be very hard to do that if you're not consolidated because the, the, one, of the, one of the main reasons those masjids survived those pandemics in the past, obviously there was an Islamic ruler, but it was consolidated. He consolidated the masjids. So when all some, of the people with all of the talent exactly. went to one masjid. Yeah. So if and you then had, they branched out from I'm that one you, place. I'm telling you, I'm talking. I guarantee you, if you took a lot of our issues and you put them in columns and you say, "But that, what, what is the problems? What is the catalyst behind these issues? We're spread too thin. That's it. Yeah. It's not that many people that have the skill set." And the experience to even have the conversation we're having right now on live. And, you, and you're keeping it real. You're talking about the, the, so if these people are spread all the way out, or, or or each and every individual that should be on somebody's board got their own masjid within a within a within a thirty mile radius. This doesn't make any sense. This isn't logical. Well, and, 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 we're not one body. And, and you know like what this. the sad part is? If we're just talking about, because I know a lot of people like to. Um, um, make it, you know, they, you know, they say that they, they call themselves, they want to call themselves Salafi, right? Mm -hmm. And I, me, when I talk, I'm talking about all the Muslims, and I'm talking about all the people. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm for helping Muslims and non-Muslims. And just, and just, and just, just, just to add something real quick, this, this, this subject topic that we're talking about, it, 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 it. It rises above the politics of whether you're from Ahlul Bida or whether you're from Ahlul Sunnah. Yeah. This, 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 when it comes to zakat. Uh, finance the house of Allah like this is a this is a bipartisan issue yeah <laughs> period but yeah. I didn't mean to cut you no, off you are, you are. at it, some it, level at some it. level and we the thing about it doesn't, it doesn't exclude as we said before it doesn't exclude the people who are actually against the tendency like the Ahmadiyya and stuff like, like that Ahmadiyya. yeah we already clarified those who, that yeah, like those who are yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. we clarified that, that. Yeah. we clarified so, that so, within the realm of uh, Allah Sunnah so yeah, if you exactly. look at so you look at the people right who's because the, the so called Salafi community is very is the it's small community it's not big considering the rest of the Muslims there's 400,000 Muslims in Philadelphia right most of them are not so called Salafis right it's a very small community a couple of hundred people maybe maybe a thousand people that mm -hmm. go to the master pray go to the classes yep. Broken right, down. maybe a thousand, something like that. I'm just taking a, a number. Mm -hmm. You can the fact that we can't manage those thousand people shows that we're not doing what the people did in the past. They was managing millions of people, so okay. that's a problem. Shake, you can't manage a thousand people. Shake, that's a problem. Huh? Well, it's not, I don't, I don't really think it's about us cannot manage them. I think it's the like he said. If you it's look method. at the column, it's if method. Look, if you look at the columns that we laid down, you will see all of the petty riffraffs. Mm. Certain that's, things that's bad started. Management. Certain things started because it was a broke off. Yeah. Certain things started yeah. because of this. We had yeah. people who had certain knowledge that was in play, like he was mentioning. If you looked in Chester, you go back and do the Chester history and stuff like that, and you mentioned the Imam Farid and stuff like that, you had certain things that was in play. Some people will listen to the statement that he just made and just say, okay, just chalk him off. Now he's supporting uh, Imam Farid. Exactly. Or some people will hear us and make a statement yeah. about Abu Muslim, let's chalk him off. Now he's supporting Imam Muslim or Abu Muslim. Or somebody hear you make a statement, and they're, they're not broadening their horizons. You just 
trying to you're just taught. trying to bring a technique they, out and exact, bring us. They are taught to say, okay, let's just worry about this. No, that's your problem. That's, that's why shaksia. the masses are falling. That's a form of shaksia. Yeah, that's why the masses are falling. We're we're talking about the problems. We're not talking about one individual, that individual. We're just saying that listen, we had people in play. And we have people who can still be in play, in position, we should look at it. So we covered the issue of safety nets. And some of the safety nets we talk about, this is the conclusion now, we get ready to end this up. The, the safety nets that we're talking about is some of the things you want to have, like walk. A walk, mm -hmm. which is an endowment. Endowment, all right? So you want to have endowment. And people, break that down. Tell them, tell them exactly what so, a walk so, is. So, 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 so people who want to donate something, for example. Say if I have, back then, the earlier walks was like wells, all right? So one of the companions had bought a well in Medina. When he took the well, he made the well a walk for the Muslims. So anybody can who eats off it, of, who, who drinks from the well, who's utilized the well mm -hmm. on that land, he get the benefit of that. But the Muslims have it now, so it benefits and generates for the Muslims. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go to anyone else. So that endowment is something that you can do on all types of levels. Say, for example, a guy got three, uh, three houses. He, he, he owned a, a, a blockchain of property, mm -hmm. right? And he might say, you know what? I can't, I'm not doing nothing with this building here. And I know that you guys might need a school here. Mm -hmm. And you can get the school up and running I give you the building, we fix it up, but then we can have where you might charge for services or anything like that, where it can now, the profits can go here, but I'm endowing it to you guys so they can be mm -hmm. as solidifying you. These are some of the things that we can do. Other things on a smaller, smaller level, when you take a Quran and you donate that Quran to the masjid, right? That falls as a form of a waqf. Mm -hmm. That that Quran now becomes whoever utilizes it, you get the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. But waqfs is a big part of safety nets. Mm -hmm. Something that we should do when people are well off, they should leave certain things that the Muslim can profit from altogether. Mm -hmm. All right? Another things of a safety net is what we call the zakat system. Plays a major role. Mm -hmm. Right now in the world, and, and we're talking about finance, in the world it has been proven over 200 years or even more that the systems that they had financially in play have failed over and over continuously. And also one of the things, the highlighting points they were making is because of the interest, the RIBA, all right? That's one of the big major downfall, downfalls of the financial system over 200 years that was planned. All right, because of the Reba. Another one of it is how do we delegate the money that mm -hmm. goes to people who are less fortunate to those who aren't? One of the biggest solutions that was presented from an Iranian uh, scholar uh, in Iran, and we know a lot of them be Shiites or whatever, but I take the haq where the haq is at. The point that he was making, and he, and he went back to the Khalifa of Umar ibn al Khattab when the Bayt al Mel was established, and he showed how the system was ran proficiently. Mm -hmm. with the zakat being in play and the Beit Mel being in play. So the zakat plays a major role in even helping out with the current world finances right now, as well as the people less fortunate. If everyone was given zakat that zakat is due on right now, mm -hmm. it would help out tremendously. But what's the misconception? People believe there is some, something stopping us from paying zakat. Is it the knowledge of zakat? Maybe is they it, well, you need an there's, Islamic leader. There's multiple things. I'm going to give you one is jahl. One is jahl. That's the first one. Ignorance of zakat, period. The details, the, um, the, 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 the details, the generalities, the understanding of it, its obligation of it, mm -hmm. that's one, all right? And that falls on two types of people. One, it falls on those whom it is individually obligated upon to actually carry out. That's mm -hmm. every one of us, because all of us are bounded by the five pillars of Islam. All right, so it's an individual obligation. And as Sheikh Saleh Ali Sheikh brought, he says, we supposed to know about zakat generally for the commoners. In detail, for the tulab or ilm. And it's the job of the tulab or ilm and the ulama to clarify these issues in detail to the commoners so that they know what's upon them, upon the obligation. So another point of it is, not just jahl, because we deal with the ignorance from that point of view and the people need to teach. Another point is, we don't have... We have small pockets of individuals setting up organizations, and something that we're talking about doing too, mm -hmm. that we should be thinking in the right direction. Sometimes we don't think in the right direction. Because of the bickering back and forth, we're not thinking like this. Our minds should be thinking like, look, we need to establish something here in the land of the Kufar that is a system. Mm -hmm. All right? As, mm -hmm. he, as Imam Farouk Post brought that it can be an organization. Not upon not a, a, one person, mm -hmm. but an organization. Mm -hmm. We can start it as what? as a system that sets up and deploy and run the zakat. 
If you have Zakat, you can delegate it here. Explain the details, how to utilize it. Mm -hmm. This is something that we're talking about doing, consolidating mm -hmm. some of the nonprofits, mm -hmm. uh, moving from down what, from Baltimore, Maryland, yeah, try to, try, to try the tri-state to, to help the, out the, with The initiative is to be able to, to act as a third-party agency. A third-party agency that, that can, can help you. That can aid individuals or who don't know the rulings of zakat exactly don't know who to give their zakat to yeah. or places that want to receive zakat, zakat but only know what to do with money like if zakat was paid in anything other than money most people are not going to know what to do with that exactly or so, how it breaks down or how it breaks down so mm -hmm. we want to be able to aid that process so that now when we're talking about a walk endowment or we're talking about uh, group economics or we're talking about this getting, is group economics. getting somebody who may have a good idea for a business but he doesn't have any money he Beto should be Mal able to, the Beto Mal should be able to invest or give him the grant we shouldn't have to get that from That's another safety the government investment. Right, so this all should be embedded inside of our community function, and exactly. like he said, this is how the earlier Muslims worked. Exactly. So that, so that, so that uh, zakat system that we see, as the brother is saying, ran with the organization. We cannot enforce people to pay the zakat. Only the ruler can do that. Only the ruler can do that. But what we could do is we encourage people by reminding them, mm -hmm. you know, of their obligation and to do. And you're going to have well, people. Well, at least at least try to set right? up a system so that way they may want to now pay the zakat. The but there's no system in place, so nobody thinks about it. Exactly. And, then, and then even here at the general store, we're starting to sell food stuff. And since since the since the COVID nineteen pandemic, we were selling pickle peppers. Yeah. We're selling honey, black seed. Um, we're going to start to get into dry goods, food stuff. That's the stuff that you give for zakat al fitra. So no. if you want to come here and you want to be able to purchase your your uh, your your mud or your sod, you know we'll be able to measure that and aid, aid people for that. And if you want to give food stuff away, you can give that food stuff away all year round. It just needs to be distributed right before the 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 uh, event for for the for, uh, the, for their eat. For their eat. Yeah. So so now that gives you plenty of room. So okay, you guys right now you guys can be. Dropping stuff off, and then we'll 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 have the trust that it will get distributed on time, so that right everybody people. gets their to the right people, so that everybody gets their hot. So now, with Zakat come and play comes Beitul Mel. By having that money, yup, we need to establish <laughs> something. Actually, we should have an institution yep. for marriage. The masjid should not be the place where the marriages the marriages should. And but this is all economics. This creates. But this, but this all falls under that. Yeah, so you go in there, yeah. right? The Beit al Mel is what's going to be fed from the zakat. So when we have that large wealth, it's like a bank now, and we have a, a legitimate Islamic bank. That's what it service now mm -hmm. because it's going to look for investments. It's going to look for individuals whom they can what they can support. Okay, you have a good idea. This good idea actually have legs. We can get behind. None of this stuff will mean anything by the permission of Allah Jalla if we don't have the right people to fit these positions. And what I right. mean by the right people is they must have the necessary knowledge and skill set to carry out these things. And the way that we have been moving post COVID-19 has been showing us because we're in COVID-19 and we're seeing that we're losing our ground and our footing that we were not moving towards this direction. And because of that, we need to take now this golden opportunity that COVID-19 afford us all. And that's what we mentioned before. Whenever Allah allow an affliction to touch any community, there are two things that Allah wants from you. He wants you to immediately recognize what you made wrong, right? So you immediately are recognizing what you made, what you did wrong, and you bring yourself to account. Mm -hmm. It's going to cause you to do another thing, return back to Allah. All right, so these are self-reflection points that we're trying to do. That's why we did this series, so that we can say, no, financially, is we really approaching the master the correct way? Financially, are we taking care of the house of Islam, I mean the houses of Islam, and making them strategic places or positions that we can actually help people? Obviously, no. Obviously, no. But there it are some been. small pockets. This talk is not, this talk excludes those masters that already this got is it general, going on. This is a general. This is general. The, those masters that already got some of these things in play, this is not towards them. But the masters in the urban communities, as, as I said, I'm specifying the urban communities, mm -hmm. we really don't have a lot of this stuff in play. And, 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 and before you well, start coming, that. and before you start coming to me about 
don't go to mass shit so and so because they ain't this or that or don't take from so and so because they ain't this or that. I'm gonna say the masjids you telling me to go to, how is their financial structure? How was the Islamic structure? Is they moving according to the earliest salaf? So should I say now you don't go to that master because they're not doing that neither? So I don't want to hear all of the bickering back. And it's shakhsia. And it's shakhsia to only go to a masjid for a fiery kutbah. Exactly. That's not providing the needs that your that your that your community needs. And most of these urban uh, massages that we're talking about are not providing what the what, what people what, what, what people need to be complete people. They're There's, not providing. There is no way in the world that we have people who got trades that does not we cannot support them to set up a trade thing to help our youth to learn those things. It's the way in the world. You got an individual who's a carpenter. He don't have the means to have his own tools or things like that, and he's working independently, right? Mm -hmm. But you can have a Beitul Mel that supports him, and in time, what he do to contribute back to the, the Muslims at large is he teaches a group of the youth how to become carpenters. And you set up a system that way. Whereas though now you are teaching what? A person how to help another person. There's no way in the world we're not moving like that. We are removing like that because I'm telling you, Allah made it clear when he told us about the Jews and the Christians. Sheikh Oslam Taymiyyah, he says, one thing you need to understand, when Allah addressed the Jews and the Christians in the Quran, the Muslims should not think it's just for them. If the Muslims are falling under that, then it applies to them as well. So in terms of Allah telling you that you would think that they were united, you would think that the Jews were united, but their hearts are divided. divided. That's what we That's see. That's the same thing with the Muslims. That's the same, That's the same thing with the same Muslims. Thing. That's the point why we don't see this. Like, like sister, you're talking about teaching somebody a trade. I remember um, um, a lot of my yeah. elders, man, they was telling me how it was for them back in the day and how their communities ran. And, you know, because I talk to the elders a lot. And they was telling me how, you know, the Negro Wall Streets outside, that's the, that's the most famous versions we know. Mm. But in all the indigenous communities, you graduated high school, you had a job. You know why? Because you had a trade. By the time you were 17, 18, you knew how to be a carpenter, you knew how to do a metal working, you knew how to put horseshoes on a horse, you knew how to uh, the clean an engine. You already knew. So when you graduated high school, they didn't need to go to college. A lot of people went right into the factory. And, and, they, and they raised a family and got married young. And they raised families but and you stuff know like what? that. You know what happened? When we and don't, by the way, these people wasn't Muslim either. Yeah, but you want to know what happened? When we don't take this role, we lose our youth. Our youth is now going to do what the system designed for them to do. They're going to think selling drugs is the only way. There's no way, there's no the way you can take the your kids way. to the masjid every single exactly. day and there's no activities for they're them. There's think, nothing for them to do. Exactly. They're, they're out gonna, front playing They're going to think that this is the it's way. Like, if we, if, 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 when, I, when I was actually in Crossroads, I was looking for an elder to teach me Funny, I was the one teaching. But what I'm saying is this. At the end of the day, we need people to take leadership roles, whether they're young or they old, so that they can give and fill in the slot for our youth that think the streets is the only way. For our youth that think that the being boxed in is the only way. That's why they're doing that. I don't want to go learn. I don't want to do this and that. I want to get high and stuff like that because it's, it's, it's downtrodden. It's wrong. But when they see that they can't go and go and get what we call like an OIC, a, 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 a center that can actually teach us, the master should be providing that. You're telling me so-and-so, yeah, you know, he um he's a, um, a CEO of a 500 country or a company. You know, so-and-so, he got four, yeah, four, Fortune 500 country, uh, a, com a company. Then you got person he owned a chain of cousins. Person he owned this, this, and that. And you mean to tell me at the, at, at the end of the day, these people have all of these different business sets and skills, and we are not contributing it back to our youth? What is going to put it into our youth? So that's the point that we need to really look at. Start looking at the master as a strategic unit. That can move and can get stuff done. So we, I think we covered a lot of the stuff in the conclusions mm -hmm. of what this whole talk was uh, about, this series was about. We really wanted to show you financial mm -hmm. literacy should not be looked down on. Financial literacy should not be outruled because that's not true to think that, okay, all you're worrying about is money. All you're worrying about is money. Let me tell you something. Money is a numbers game. And money, whether it's paper or whatever the case may be, it's not the money we're talking about. The things that you need, because money, as you said, is a muscle of life. It's a muscle of life. Shit, Muxa said it's the but muscle the of life. But the things that you need, Islam provides for you so that you can harmonize when you utilize the money.
The problem is people don't have what Islam teaches them. So when they get the money, they begin to either worship the money, they be like to fight over the money, they get to separate over the money, they get to um they scheme hoard the it money. over the money, they hoard the money because their hearts are not this, this, and that. A man came to the Prophet and he said, Indeed, I like the garment that you have on, the thole that you have on. The Prophet <laughs> took the thole off and gave it to the man. Allah right? The, the Prophet <laughs> took the thobe off and gave it to the man. Guess what? I, I'm just going to bring two or three benefits that the early man strike from this. One, it removes jealousy. Mm -hmm. You don't want a brother to be jealous of you? Give him what you got. Right? I'm not saying you have to. It's not mandatory, but it, it removes that. Another thing it do is what? It brings love and affection for the, mm -hmm. for the it, heart. It, yeah. mm -hmm. It's going to bring love and affection towards together, right? Again, what else to do? It increases that person iman because he may or may not have the money to buy a thold like that. And because he got it, he's going to be thanking Allah. Oh, Allah, Akbar, look, I got it. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to increase that person iman. All of these different things we really need to start taking consideration. Inshallah ta'ala, um, hopefully, I hope we did some justice. Anybody that we spoke about uh, uh, incorrectly, if you thought that we spoke about them incorrectly, any names that we mentioned. If Just we for example. If we didn't account their stories uh, I'll let the brother go. If we didn't account their stories like Abu Muslimah, any of those people like that, and we didn't give you the four details, we don't know the four information, it was not to endorse anyone. All right? We did not mention names only to endorse that name or to endorse that name. We mentioned those names because they are in our history. And they have, I mean, they have a right historically to be mentioned if you're going to talk about the history of, of Islam, in the, of Islam in, the in the West. All right, so that's one of the reasons why we mention them, and it's not to endorse them or so forth like that. And also, I made a statement uh, a couple episodes ago, um, and it, it was a slip of the tongue. I, I don't believe that what the prophet came with was poetry, but I said that the prophet uh, used, used, uh, utilized poetry uh, to utilize. We his brought the poetry. hadith on that. Yeah, we brought what? the hadith on that. We brought that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually allowed set up a pulpit. No, but so I, that, I uh, referred to the can give a but I, I, I but I referred to what he came with in my example as poetry and the Quran is not poetry. Oh yeah, the Quran is not. So poetry. I just wanted to make that clear that it was a slip of the tongue. I didn't I didn't have any intent on describing the Quran as other than the speech of Allah that's not created. I just wanted to uh, uh, use Clear that as an it, example yeah. that the the art and the skill of eloquency and language. And, 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 and delivery is a platform. And if we don't take advantage of that in, in, the, in, in the modern times, we're gonna lose our youth because they're into that. Yeah, well poetry has, poetry, poetry has its good effects and its positive effects and it has its negative effects. The prophet already told you that. Mm -hmm. He told you that I mean to be careful, don't go overboard into poetry, but poetry could be, and it could bring structure, like you said, the mm -hmm. spoken word, as long as the spoken word don't get out of hand and different things of that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Most people sometimes they want to have music behind it. They want to mm -hmm. dance and do other stuff. They want to say crazy yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, other than that, you can still utilize uh, poetry and things like that. I think that's, that's kind of So, good. but in, in, in the closing, um, again, please, if you haven't joined to the Night Shift Podcast on Facebook, please join the Night Shift Podcast on Facebook. And because um, maybe we will start uh, season two from the Night Shift podcast. So if you haven't joined, please do that. And also, we're going to start here for, in Search and Rescue Dry Goods, start to sell colloidal silver mm -hmm. and colloidal copper. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't know what that is, you can do, do the research on it. We're going to start, we're going to home make it, make it ourselves, and start selling it from right here from Search and Rescue Dry Goods. Uh, so mm -hmm. wa watch out for that. Pop that up on me, yeah. And don't forget, Search and Rescue Dry Goods is 3101 West Glenwood Avenue, Brewery Town, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Make sure you go on Facebook, as our brother Issa said, and make sure you follow, push the like button or the follow button for Night Shift Podcast. Night Shift Podcast is a public group. We're trying to build up the uh, followers. If we get enough followers, we're looking about about 300 to 500. We can start going live from there instead mm -hmm. of the Mechtab and Mia dealing with that. We're also working towards the getting the podcast on um and give Spotify. us your, and give us you guys feedback. We did ten episodes. Let us know what you think. We want to keep it going. Mm -hmm. uh, we need your support uh, in terms of just your feedback. You know, watching it, the views, the interactivity. Hit the like button. You know, don't just be a fly on the wall. Actually, mm -hmm. interact with us. Engage. And if you if you guys have any comments or critiques or any benefits that we can that could take the show to the next level or push us further, let us know. Let us know if you want to see us do this. If you want this from us, let and us also, know. And also, and if you think that we, our sound quality is off and you think that we have certain things that are not there, then we also take donations. 
That that is true. We also take donations. We don't got our hands out. We're not saying begging the people. But if you want some good quality, you want some good things like that, then do not be shy. We do take donations, inshallah ta'ala. We will provide a link for you, probably a cash app link or something like that, where you can help out so we can get our podcast equipment up, inshallah. Subhanakallah. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdul